All righty, welcome everyone to Headshots at Home. My name is Hannah. I am an instructor at PAR Library, and I will be assisted by my chat facilitator, Sabrina, today. Please say hi, Sabrina. Hello, everyone. All righty, some ground rules before we get started. Your mics have been muted on purpose. If you have program-related questions you would like to ask, please do so in chat, which can be accessed at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Your text will only be seen by panelists, not all attendees. Any inappropriate behavior will result in your removal from this virtual program. We will try to answer the questions as we go along, but there will be time for Q&A after the lesson is over. Today, we will be covering how to set up, shoot, and edit headshot photos. Let's see here. Uh, this class is bordering on a beginning to intermediate level, so we will not be going over uh, extreme detail about camera settings, technical aspects, or tools. If you find yourself lost, a recording will be sent out of this program, and recommended tutorials will be displayed at the end of class. We'll be using Adobe Photoshop to edit photos, but there are some free alternatives such as Photopea if you do not have access to Photoshop. Currently, every branch has a computer with Adobe Creative Cloud um, out on the public floor, so you can edit your photos for free at either of those, either of our locations. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. A brief overview of this class is we will be focusing on setting up the shot, including supplies, lighting, and background options. And then we'll move on to angles, Local points and some sh common shooting issues such as uh, dealing with glasses. Then we will move on to the editing process with Photoshop. We'll focus on cropping, clone stamping, and vignettes, blemish removal, shadow removal, and glare removal. Uh, if we have time, we will see about teeth whitening and severe glare removal. All right, so some basic supplies that you're going to need you're going to need a camera. You're going to need either a DSLR or a smartphone. We'll focus on the next uh, pros and cons on the next slide. You're going to need some lighting. We're going to talk about natural versus artificial lighting. And we're going to talk about one, two, or three point lighting. And then we're going to round out the end with uh, focusing on background choices, such as bed sheets, paper, or textured surfaces. So for your cameras, you have two options, a DSLR, a digital single lens reflex. Those are those big bulky cameras you see with those big lenses on them. Uh, the pro to these, this camera choice is uh, you get a superior photo quality, but some cons, they are expensive and they do have steep learning curves. Um, another option for you are smartphones. Pro, easy to use, most everyone has one. Cons. It does lack photo quality. It applies a color profile, which means your phone on your camera is applying a lot of colors where it thinks the colors belong. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And also smartphone cameras typically apply a warped lens effect, especially when shooting in selfie mode. So for instance, photo on the left shot with a DSLR, photo on the right shot with the smartphone. If you notice the photo on the right, uh, this is me, by the way, um, the photo on the right, my eyes are very big. Um, so is my nose, my lips, it, like basically the center portion of my face is enlarged. Um, and that's because smartphones, whenever they're shot in selfie mode, they have almost a fisheye effect so that they can fit more in it. And also having larger eyes and you know, facial features like that can have a flattering effect. Whereas the DSLR on the, on the left hand photo is much more of a neutral presentation of how someone looks in real life. Up next is lighting. So whenever I uh, take photos, I prefer natural lighting. So I tend to shoot near windows with diffused lights. So you're not going to shoot in direct light. If you ever shoot in direct light, your skin is going to um, be overexposed. Your shadows are going to be more pronounced. It just isn't a great look. 
So if you're shooting with natural lighting, uh, please shoot in the shade of a tree or shoot next to a big window in your home and uh, make sure you're just not in direct light. A great alternative is artificial lighting. You tend to have a lot more control with artificial lighting. I do recommend two to three point lighting whenever you're shooting indoors. We're gonna focus on that in the next slide, but um, you don't have to get a huge fancy setup like this green screen setup on the left I have up there. Um, try out the different lamps in your home, different lighting, go into the kitchen. I do recommend whatever lighting that you use. Uh, you test the color temperature. You do that just by holding up like a sheet of paper to it, looking at the sheet of paper. And if you notice on this little right hand photo here, there's the yellow photo and then going into blue. It doesn't really matter what you shoot with as long as you shoot with the same color temperature. So if you're gonna be shooting with fluorescence and LEDs, it's gonna be a lot more blue. Just shoot with those. Don't mix yellow with blue lighting because that is kind of difficult to edit later. This is an example of one point lighting. Now this is great for if you want to get a more artistic photo, dramatic, um, it has very severe shadows. Um, a lot of people choose to shoot one point lighting whenever they're doing black and white photography. So it creates more contrast and you know drama. But two point lighting really lightens the face. You still have some shadows to play with. Uh, but my personal favorite is three-point lighting. So three-point lighting, it's very neutral. You're not getting any severe shadows. Um, you have a light on the left, light on the right, and then a light in front, right in front of your subject, where it illuminates their eyes, their face, and it provides a very neutral, um, less dramatic, but uh, more neutral-friendly type of photo. A very important part of your headshot photography is the background that you choose to shoot against. So you don't want anything too dramatic that's going to distract from your subject. Um, but if you're at home, just try hanging up a bed sheet or uh, pieces of paper. You have butcher paper at home. That's fantastic. Um, you know, you want to set up your, your light sources on either side of your subject and play with that lighting a lot. Um, if I'm looking for a nice dramatic photo, I like to shoot outside in the shade of a tree or if it's overcast out, shooting uh, in overcast lighting. So whenever there's clouds in the sky is just fantastic because you're able to just move your subject uh, and get the lighting that you want. You can try shooting against bricks or foliage for a nice dramatic effect. The photo on the far left here, I was shooting against a gray sheet, just hanging up against the wall. Photo in the center, you can see it's a little bit distracting. I didn't blur the background as much as I should have, but um, just some kind of dry brush to really make you know, the subject pop against it. This photo down here, you can see how blurred that parking lot is, so it does not distract from the subject, but there's still splashes of green, gray, brown, um, to really kind of make the subject pop. And uh, background here, red brick with uh, some wood paneling on the side. You wanna make sure your subject is standing a, like a, at least a foot or two away from the background so you can blur it successfully without it looking off. This right here, I shot against a, a very bright, green bush, but I made sure my subject was, I think, two or three feet ahead of the bush, um, and I had him kneel, so you get like a nice downward effect on the nose. You don't get that triangle effect if you're shooting below somebody, and I really like how the background kind of naturally blurred. I don't think I had to edit that at all, and then this subject right here, I really like the brick look for him because he's wearing a nice leather jacket, you know, um, just really makes the subject pop against it. And something that people don't think about whenever they're taking photos of a subject or whenever their subject appears, um, you do not want to shoot in very bright clothing, no bright or bold colors. So no red, 
um, no yellow, no orange, um, just don't do it because it's going to show up somewhere on the subject's skin or clothing. Even if you're you know, a fair distance away, it can still show up um, and tell your subject to just wear neutral colors. So black, brown, beige, some dark greens, just nothing too bright or bold. Next up is angles. So this far left photo right here is a full view. It's very direct front facing. Then we have the three quarters. So the shoulders are still straight. You get a little bit of the jawline. The nose has a little bit of a three quarter profile. Um, this is my favorite type of setup just because it's really easy to pull off and it's very flattering to most people. Then you get the two thirds view, so a little bit more dramatic. You get a more pronounced nose, a little more pronounced cheekbones, uh, a little more dramatic shadows. I will say, just talk to your subject whenever you are taking these photos and ask them what features of their face that they would like to uh, accentuate or show off and what features they would like to not uh, emphasize. So if you have a subject that does not like their nose, they don't like the shape of their nose, you're not going to want to do a two thirds view because that really shows off the nose. I would either do a full view front on or a three quarter. Three quarters typically very flattering. Ooh, next up, we're going to talk about focal points. So, with your headshot photography, the focal point, you always want it to be the eyes. You can always tell you've done a very good job as a headshot photographer. If you zoom in on the eyes and the pupils and you can see the sources of light reflected back. So just to emphasize that, I zoomed in really, really close to my headshot here and I was using three point lighting. So you can literally count one, two, three. Um, it's really great whenever you are outside as well. If you can kind of see the landscape and the horizon reflected in their eyes. That means you have enough light going into their irises and um, those little bright light spots really show up very nicely um, in their eyes. Another example, you can even see my arms reaching up to take this upward angle photo. You can see the rest of the horizon reflected in this uh, gentleman's eyes. Always just take a bunch of photos and try to make sure you get those eyes as the main focus. All right, a very big issue that I have to deal with because I do wear glasses is you do get shadows uh, with glasses. If we have enough time today, we're definitely going to try and focus on how to remove those, but your best friend is going to be playing with the lighting that you have. So three point lighting is going to help because it lessens that, that, uh, contrast with the shadows, um, but there are some tools within Photoshop that we can use to uh, Photoshop those shadows out. Next up is a very severe example of glasses glare. So if you have ever taken a photo of someone or have someone take a photo of you and you get a lot of glasses glare um, and it's very severe, there is a workaround and it can be quite difficult, but the results can be very nice. So I usually have my subject take a photo with their glasses on and I ask them or my assistant to please remove the glasses without changing the angle of their face as best as they can. And I take one photo or a few without the glasses on. And then what I do is I take the eyes from the photo without the glasses and I Photoshop them in with the glasses frame still adding a little bit of quote unquote natural glare and a little bit of glasses bending effect over here just to make it look a little more natural but you can actually see the subject's eyes um, and they aren't lost to that lens glare or lens warp so if we have time today i'll definitely try and show you guys that Okay, before we hop into editing, are there any questions about any of the, the processes that I've, I've listed so far?
Okay, it doesn't look like there's any questions so far. Okay, awesome. Well, you guys just type in chat if you have any questions. We're going to get started on this editing. All right, so I already have Photoshop pulled open. So let's go down here. We're going to start with cell phone photos because I do want to show you guys that you don't need a super fancy DSLR to get a classy headshot especially for your you know, LinkedIn profile, business cards, all that fun stuff. DSLR photos do have superior photo quality, but you can do a lot with a cell phone. So let's start with this selfie one. Do... Loading. All righty, so this is that photo I was showing you guys that it kind of applied a warp lens effect to the center part of my face, but it's not severe enough for me to throw out the whole photo. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to crop because I don't want this to be on my LinkedIn profile. So I'm going to go over here. Crop tool is keyboard shortcut of C as in cat. This little frame appears. And I'm just going to drag that in and see, move that, drag that in, drag that down a little bit. You just got to get the right angle for you. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let me click this little check mark up here to finalize your selection. All right, and now I'm going to zoom in with the keyboard shortcut of Z as in zombie. Can we zoom in? Looking much, much better. All right, so a little pro tip, if you are taking headshots at home and you're hanging up a sheet, be sure to iron the sheet before you put it up because as you can see, there are tons of wrinkles back here but we are going to Photoshop those out. We are going to select our clone stamp tool. You see it's right over here. It looks like a little stamp. Keyboard shortcut of S as in Sam. And a little tip for whenever you are using the clone stamp tool, since we are rewriting the pixels directly, I'm gonna right click our background layer over here and select duplicate layer and okay. So basically any changes that I make, say if I mess up horribly, I can just go over here and turn the layer off or delete it. It's a good fail safe. You never want to edit your background layer directly. There's even a little lock there. So you try not to, just try to avoid it. Okay, so with my clone stamp tool selected, I'm gonna make it pretty big. I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and it turns into a little bullseye. I'm going to left click an area that doesn't have too many wrinkles. So alt, left click, let go of alt, and then just click and drag. I'm going to resample, alt and left click. Much better. The key to the clone stamp tool is to just keep resampling. So alt, left click. You want to make sure where you're sampling. Let's say if I sample here, if I go down, you see that little cross? I'm going to capture wherever that little cross is. And you don't want to capture your subject in there whenever you're editing the back. Control Z is step backwards. So I'm just going to keep editing here. Alt, left click smoothing out those wrinkles, some bad ones over here. Do that, alt, left click. Okay, that's looking much, much better. And another trick to getting rid of wrinkles is you blur the background. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here and select my lasso tool, keyboard shortcut of L for love. And with your lasso tool, you're going to left click 
and drag around your subject. And the most important thing is you want to meet up with your origin point. You're going to see what I'm doing. I'm dragging all the way around the subject, making sure to not touch the subject's hairline or face or clothes. And you meet up with your origin point. If you don't, Photoshop is going to try its best to tell where you were intending to go. So let's say if I just let go here, it's going to take the shortest route back to your origin point. So I'm going to do that again. Left click, drag, avoiding subjects hair, clothes, and face. And I'm going to carefully make my way back to the origin point. Once you do, you get these little moving black and white dashed lines here. Those are called dancing ants. I think that's pretty funny. Um, if you find that you didn't like your original selection, you don't have to start from scratch. So let's say if I wanted to bring this line in a little bit closer, I wanted to uh, bring it in a little bit closer to the hairline. So what you're going to do is to add to your selection. So I have the background selected right now. You're going to hold down shift on your keyboard and the little plus will appear where your cursor is. And you're going to left click and drag. And it adds to your selection. So holding shift left click and drag adds to your selection now let's say if i went too far and actually got some of the subject's hair or skin if you hold alt a little minus appears and you draw around the area you wish to take away from your selection and the alt takes away from that so you can always kind of draw your first selection a little, um, you know, loosely, and then just kind of add and take away. Alrighty, so with my background area selected and not my subject, I'm going to right click and I'm going to feather. And I'm going to feather it about 15 pixels. So feathering means the border right here that I've drawn. Uh, right now, it's very, very harsh. It's very, very small. So feathering softens that border. It softens the transition. So let's see here. I'm going to do about 15 pixels. All right. And with my background copy selected, I'm going to go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. So. Go up here, zoom out a little bit. So let's go ahead. We're going to increase that pixel area and not make it too crazy because you don't want it to be too soft of a background. I think that looks pretty good. And this was before and after. You can do your before and after checks by selecting that little eye icon in your layers panel. That's looking much, much better. I think the last thing that I need for this photo because my phone applied a decent color profile to this. It doesn't look too yellow, too blue, too red. Uh, we're just gonna apply a simple vignette to kind of add emphasis to your subject. So if you go over to your elliptical marquee tool, keyboard shortcut of M, as in man, left click and drag around your subject. You can kind of click and drag and move that oval around. Right click your selection, select feather. And this time we're gonna make it a very, very gradual transition. So I'm gonna do 60 pixels. It's gonna be a very soft border. Then right click, select inverse. You're going to go over to your adjustments panel, brightness and contrast, and you're going to drag that down. 
So this way your subject is a little bit lighter than your background. We got a before and an after, much, much better. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the next cell phone photo. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions yet. All righty. So next up, let's see here. Desktop. And let's do this one. So this is my favorite alternative to doing a selfie phone is if you have someone who can take a photo of you from about six feet away and they use the digital zoom in function on your phone. That way you don't get any distorted view. You don't get big eyes, big nose, big lips, anything like that. It's much more neutral. And uh, be up against, you know, some bricks, a tree, a bush, something interesting. If you can see on this photo, um, I am underneath a tree so there's a little bit of sunlight coming through but I feel like it kind of adds to the uh, composure of the photo. First things first we're going to crop this because if you guys noticed these brick lines are not parallel with the photo uh, frames. So if you look at a photo and you're wondering what's off sometimes the horizon line or if there are lines in the background if they are slightly um, you know, not parallel to the frame of the photo, it can kind of give an off-putting feeling. So I'm going to go over to the crop tool, keyboard shortcut of C is in cat. And I'm not even going to crop this very much. I'm just going to hover over one of the corners and I'm going to rotate it. A little grid appears. You can check to see if that photo is parallel. Perfect, that's about all I need. I'm gonna select the check icon and that looks great. So let's see here. I think I'm gonna blur the bricks a little bit. I am right up against that brick wall, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult. But I'm gonna go back to our lasso tool, keyboard shortcut of L. And I'm gonna draw around myself here and this will be cool. and keep in mind you can still be messy whenever you're first drawing your selection it doesn't have to be perfect you can always go back and clean it up later okay so i'm going to add to my selection because i want to get a little bit closer on this cheekbone hold shift left click and drag and i'm going to get down here underneath the elbow not that anybody's going to be looking over there but it's the devil is in the details you know okay i'm going to get a little bit up here all right i'm happy with that selection so what i'm going to do is i have to create a, another background layer to apply that gaussian blur so right click duplicate layer Okay, and we're going to right click our selection, select feather, and let's do, this one isn't super high quality, so let's do 10 pixels, and filter, blur, Gaussian blur, now if you see that is way too much blur. So we're going to bring that back down. We're going to make it look as natural as possible. And I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Let's just see what that looks like. That looks fairly good, but I'm not super happy with this shoulder area right here. You can kind of see how harsh that brick is. So let me control Z out of that. And I'm going to add to our selection. There we go. Add to that. We're going to get a little bit closer to the outline. Okay. So I'm just holding shift, left click, and dragging. Get a little bit closer. 
Okay, much better. We go through that same process of feathering, about 10 pixels, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Oh, that looks much better. A lot more natural for your subject still appears in focus, but the background is not being overly emphasized. Okay. So I think for this, we're just going to apply vignette because once again, the color profile isn't super blue, it isn't super red, yellow, green, anything like that. So we're just going to go up to our marquee tool and left click and drag. We're going to try and get most of the shoulders and head in here. Right click, select inverse, right click, feather, and let's do 60. Make it nice and soft. Adjustments, brightness and contrast, bring that down. Very dramatic photo, I love it. Before and after, much better. So those are our cell phone photos. It just shows you that, yes, it is possible to get a very nice headshot photo just with your cell phone. Um, so up next, we're going to hop into DSLR. So file open, DSLR, and let's see here. I'm going to start with the one point because uh, it's nice and dramatic. Sometimes you like a dramatic look. And da, da, da. with Photoshop, it's going to open. If you use a DSLR camera, sometimes you shoot in what's called RAW. Um, I typically shoot in RAW because it basically means the camera is not applying any color profile at all towards it. And you can control a lot of temperature aspects before you even import the photo. So I'm going to give it a little more blue because I shot with some very yellow lighting. And I'm going to add a little bit of green, a little bit more blue. Bump up the exposure just a little bit. These are just fun to play with, these raw settings. Um, so definitely have some fun whenever you import your photos. All right, Hannah, we do have yes. a question. Awesome. Um, it's about printing. It says, mm -hmm. what setting should we use to print a cell phone photo to get the most out of it when printing? What settings to use whenever you're printing from a cell phone photo? So let me go back to this photo, let's say I love the color in here. So if you're just printing it at home on your color printer, um, you can just go up to file, export, and export as. This is where all of your settings are gonna come into play. If you're just printing at home, select JPEG and bump up that quality to as high as it will go. And that's all you need. You just hit export, save your photo. And I usually put, call it something different like edited or anything like that and save. Now, if you are getting your photos professionally printed, I would talk to the uh, printing business you're taking it to because Web screens, cell phone screens, anything with a screen uses RGB. It's the most common color profile format, whereas a lot of professional printers will use CMYK. You typically won't ever have to worry about CMYK, but just ask the professional printer, do you want it as a JPEG or a PNG? They typically handle the CMYK color conversion and they color match, um, you know, it's a whole part of the process, but just ask them which file format they would prefer. It's, it's up to them if they're for PNG or JPG. Um, hopefully that answers your question. If it does not, please uh, ask a follow-up in the chat. Uh, looks like it answered it. They said, thank you. Perfect. Alrighty. So let's go back to our 
one point lighting. And let's see here. So um, the first thing I would like to address is this stark shadow right here from that glasses frame. I don't have a huge problem with the background. I might blur out that little wrinkle right there, but for the most part, it looks all right. I'm gonna crop it real quick though, just to get rid of this you know, excess area. We're just gonna pull that in, pull that in, pull it down a little bit and perfect. So with this, dark line right here. I want to try and edit that out. So I'm going to make a copy of the background. Right click. Duplicate layer. Okay. And I'm going to select my clone stamp tool, keyboard shortcut of S and Sam. And with your clone stamp tool selected, you can change the diameter of your brush size by using the bracket keys. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm going to have it be just a little bit wider than the shadow I'm trying to erase. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sample the area right next to the shadow. So I'm going to hold Alt, left click, and I'm just going to tap very lightly, left click using very small mouse gestures. And that's looking much better. The tricky part comes whenever you are right up against the eyelashes. So up in this area, I can't use the clone stamp tool super, super well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the lasso tool and I'm just gonna draw where this shadow is and make sure I get all of it. Okay, I'm gonna right click the feather and let's try five pixels because it's a very small area. And I'm going to select adjustments, brightness and contrast again. And I'm going to pull that up. I don't want it to be too intense because then you kind of get a lot of red and it looks just kind of like a lot. So I'm just going to, a little bit of shadow is fine. We just want to lessen it just a smidge. I'm going to zoom back out. And let's see here. Um, that looks pretty good. I might increase it just a little bit. Yeah, that looks much better. So before and after. Um, a little pro tip, I think if I have like a little pimple right there, if you wanna remove any blemishes, scars, anything like that, just zoom in close go to your background copy. And there is a lovely tool called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Keyboard shortcut of J is in Jack. The key to using this tool is you want your brush diameter to be slightly bigger than the blemish or the scar that you are trying to Photoshop out. So all you have to do is left click once and it's gone. All right, I'm going to get one right there and right there. And I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. One right there. Okay. So that looks great. I like the color profile on here. You know, I did some editing in that raw setting before I imported it. It doesn't look too yellow or too blue. I tend to like a little bit of warmth to my photos, so I add a little bit of yellow. Um, that looks great. We might blur the background a little bit because I do see some wrinkles here. So let me keyboard shortcut of L. Just gonna make a very quick selection. Okay. And right click, feather. And this one, we're gonna do try 60. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So it's just kind of applying the same effects uh, for each of your photos, but just at different levels. So this photo has a lot more pixels per inch. So I'm gonna increase that pixel size. 
okay or after much smoother background that uh, line from my glasses frame is gone and i don't have any imperfections on my skin okay let's move on to the next photo i have a unique problem for y'all so let's see here one point, one point, let's go to three points. So this one, I'm actually holding up that uh, third light right in front. Uh, so that was kind of difficult to kind of balance all that. But I do like the neutral lighting here. The only downside is there's a little bit of glasses glare and a little bit of a shadow right there. So, um, and also a, a unique problem is my lips, there's like a little tiny gap there that I don't like looking at. You're not supposed to have little gaps in your lips whenever you're shooting headshot photography. Um, so it's just distracting. So let's see what this other photo looks like. Keep that one. It has the same issue. Yep, same issue. This one has a lot more warm lighting. Let me use that one. I like a lot of warmth in my photos. Okay, open. All right, first things first, we have to crop our photo because we don't want that lighting box included in there. So crop. And there's some options whenever you're cropping up in this options bar. You can either do a square. So if you're posting to uh, Instagram or anything like that prefers square photos, um, let's do a two thirds ratio. We'll keep it proportional. Let's move in pretty close here. There we go. And perfect. Zoom in a little bit. Um, let's just start with the blemish tool. So I'm going to right click my background layer, select duplicate layer. Okay. I'm going to go over to my spot healing tool over here and left click, left click, left click. I will say whenever you are taking photos of somebody or of yourself, um, if you have prominent features in your face that are there all the time, I will advise maybe don't Photoshop them out because you don't want to surprise people. If I've Photoshopped out every single one of my freckles and then I show up um, to a job interview and they weren't expecting it, it's just kind of alarming. So just a word of caution, you want to be as honest as possible whenever you are taking headshot photos and editing them. So, I took out some blemishes. I think that looks great. Um, let's take care of that gap right there. So I'm gonna zoom in real close. And I think I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool. I wanna control exactly where I'm sampling from on either side. So keyboard shortcut of S. And we're going to sample directly to the left of that gap. So Alt, left click, and just slowly try to kind of line it up. That looks good. I'm going to sample to the right of the gap. Alt, left click, boop, and just keep doing that until you get it all taken care of. That looks much better. Yep, no gap. Okay. Let's see if we can take out that glasses glare. That amount of glasses glare isn't bad, um, but let's see if we can reduce that just a little bit. All right, clone stamp tool, S, Alt, left click. Let me get rid of that shadow first. Pesky shadow and much better. Okay, so I'm going to try and reduce this just a little bit at least, bring it up to the eyelash line. 
alt left click and just kind of painting that out alt left click trying to make it a little less severe it gets tricky whenever you get up in the eyes and let's see if i can get a little bit right here very good okay so that just kind of lessened it but it still shows a little bit which is fine because i am wearing glasses a little bit of glare is appropriate from time to time uh, mm -hmm. let's see i'm gonna add a vignette i don't think i need it on this photo but let's just see what it looks like keyboard shortcut of m okay right click select inverse right click feather and let's do 75 and make it very nice and gradual adjustments brightness and contrast yeah no huge difference i don't think you really need a vignette depending on your on your lighting and we may keep it um, if you wanted to dip into editing for black and white photography from a color photo there's an awesome filter on Photoshop, you just select this little black and white adjustment layer and it turns it black and white for you. And you can change how dark your reds are, yellows, greens, science, blues, all sorts of fun stuff. You can do different filters. If you want something, you know, a little more dramatic. Awesome, but for the most part, I like to stick with color. Um, I think we have enough time to do some teeth whitening. So if you have any questions, please ask them in chat. Uh, yes, we do have a question. Perfect. Um, using a DSLR camera, which lenses are the best for portraits? Ooh, I would say that is up to your personal preference, but I have had a lot of luck uh, and a lot of great photos from 50 millimeter lenses whenever I am taking photos of people. It's a lot harder to pull off whenever you're taking selfies with your DSLR. Um, but 50 millimeter, it's typically referred to as the nifty 50 lens because most photographers have it in their uh, suitcase of lenses. Either that or um, I've shot with a 35 millimeter lens that produced awesome results. But really, whenever you have a 50 millimeter lens and you are focused right on their, uh, their eyes, nothing else turns out as good, at least in my experience. Like I really enjoy the nifty 50 lens. So highly recommend it, but you can make whatever lens work. So it's just whatever um, you prefer. Alrighty, let's go and focus on some teeth whitening just as a final practice. Let's see. Here. So everybody has a little bit of a yellow tint to their teeth, um, unless they have had some treatments or just have very, very lucky genetics. Most people will have a yellow, a natural yellow tint to their teeth. So I'm going to select the lasso tool, word shortcut of L, and I'm just going to draw around these teeth as close as I can. There are tons of tutorials out there about how to whiten teeth, so maybe there's something that will work better for you, but this is how I've been doing it for a couple of years, and I really like the results. So with my uh, little teeth selection, I'm going to right click and I'm going to feather. I'm going to do, eh, let's try five pixels. This isn't a super high res photo. And I'm going to go up to adjustments. I'm going to go to color balance. And this little yellow slider right here, I'm just going to take the yellow out. I'm going to move towards blue. And for the red to cyan, I'm going to add a little bit of cyan. You don't want to go too dramatic. 
and you end up with blue teeth. But this looks pretty good. Sometimes canine teeth are a little more pronounced, a little more yellow. So I'm just going to draw again. Right click, feather, five pixels, back to adjustments, back to color balance, and I'm going to add a little more blue and a little more cyan to that canine. I think that looks really good, but let's go ahead and we're going to add some brightness to the teeth to make them a little bit brighter. I'm going to go to my first little layer here since I already drew around those teeth once. I don't want to have to keep drawing around it. I'm going to right click that little black box, add a mask to selection, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and I'm going to slowly pull that brightness up. You don't want to go too far because then it looks very photoshopped and very fake. But I think that looks fairly natural. We're still keeping a little bit of color in the teeth. Or after. Or after. Much better. Oh, we have a few minutes left in class. Um, I'm going to show you guys the before and after of that photo with severe lens uh, glare. So let's see here. I'm going to turn off all the editing that I did. This was the before. And basically what I did was I opened the other photo of my subject and I took one eye from that selection with uh, whatever he took his glasses off and I just copy pasted it just brought it right over and I zoomed in real close and I made sure to erase right at the edge of his glasses so it went from that to that whenever you're editing with glasses you still do want to keep a little bit of a lens bowing because you don't want to fill it in completely. It just makes it look very Photoshop. The subtlety is the name of the game. And same with this one. I just went in, made sure, make my selection match the inside of that frame as much as possible. And I kept a little bit of a lens flare just to kind of pull the viewer into uh, believing that those are his real eyes from that one shot. An example of the uh, slide I had earlier about wearing clothing that is neutral. I was wearing neutral colored clothing in this shot, but we were shooting outside on a very sunny day in, in the shade, but the grass reflected on his skin. So even shooting outside, you're going to have to worry about shooting against grass and bushes because the green might reflect on the skin. So what I did was I took my lasso tool, I'll show you, and I just drew kind of sloppily around that selection and I feathered it, I think by like 25, went to adjustments, went to color balance and I just took it out. I added some red to get away from that green. You just wanna drag that little color scale in the opposite direction. But not too far, you don't wanna to be too intense. But yeah, it's, whenever you're shooting outside, that is a risk if you have very vibrant grass or plants near you, it might show up on your subject skin. Um, but that really covers it, y'all. Um, we've covered lighting, supplies, angles, backgrounds, um, you know, blurring the backgrounds, taking out blemishes, taking out glares. We've really covered a lot. Are there any final questions before we uh, part ways today? Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions, but I am seeing some thank yous. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for attending our class. Once again, just uh, we have Adobe Photoshop 
on a computer in each of our branches. So you can just walk in. If it's available, you can just log on to that computer. Um, some more resources. Let's see. Let's see here. Some more resources for you. Um, with your Plano Public Library card, you have free access to LinkedIn Learning. It is a free uh, premium tutorial, video tutorial website. And that's where I learned a lot of the tricks of the trade. So highly recommend Photoshop 2022 Essential Training, The Basics by Juliana Cost. Learning Portrait Photography and Learning Headshot Photography by Levi Sim. Another resource that you have available for free with your Plano Public Library card is our Book Librarian service. You can go to our homepage, planolibrary.org, hover over library. There will be a tab that says uh, help from a librarian slash suggest an item. You fill up that Book of Librarian form and you get a free 30 minute one on one session tutorial on a subject of your choosing. So as long as it's not rocket science or something terribly complicated, we can definitely help you out with that. So if you need a touch up on Photoshop or you have further questions, please fill out that form and we would be very happy to help you. Um, any final questions today? Uh, no, I'm not seeing any more questions. All righty. Well, that is the end of our virtual program. You guys, uh, thank you so much for attending, and we will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.